Welcome to this special program on Tasmania's housing crisis. I'm Guy Stainer. It's been three years since the Tasmanian government convened an emergency housing summit designed to address the lack of affordable housing in the state. The government insists progress has been made. But three years on, the public housing waiting list is getting longer. Hobart and regional Tasmania remain the most unaffordable areas in the country. It's driving many young people into homelessness, with a third of Tasmanians aged 16 to 25 on the public housing waiting list. Alexandra Humphreys begins our coverage. Just after Christmas, Andrew Kamel was told he was being evicted. Well, it's a bit heartbroken. A disability pensioner after a workplace spinal injury, Mr Kamel has packed his life into a storage unit and is preparing to lose shared custody of his two children. For nearly two years, his home in Hobart's northern suburbs has been one of hundreds of Tasmanian properties subsidised through the National Rental Affordability Scheme. That's now ending and the rent is going up. Well, I did a search and there's nothing. There's, there's nothing at all at that sort of price that I can afford. Mr Kamel will become one of an increasing number of homeless Tasmanians. The only option I've got is I've got camping gear. It's just to you know, go to a caravan park and sleep in a tent. For those Tasmanians who are living in a tent, who need a home, it is unacceptable that we are not able to provide that. Three years ago, the state government convened an emergency housing summit. It followed a state election campaign dominated by stories of working families facing homelessness and images of Hobart showgrounds as a makeshift refuge. I think we're hitting another crisis. Right across the state, we've got more on offer now for people who find themselves in acute housing need than we've ever had before. Hobart and regional Tasmania remain the most unaffordable areas in the country. I would say that the difference is that now it's more spread around Tasmania and it's not just focused on Hobart as was the situation in 2018. Three years on, the figures are stark. The public housing waiting lists up 9% to more than 3,500 people. Median rents up 22% and vacancy rates across the three major centres remain extremely low. House prices have also risen rapidly. They're up 14% in Hobart, 21% in Launceston and a whopping 28% in Burnie. Several Tasmanians struggling back then are no better off. Allied health professional Fiona first shared her story in 2019. She was facing homelessness when her rental was taken off the market. Two years on, she's unpacking again after her fourth move in as many years, still stuck on the rental merry-go-round. I, I thought it was a crisis then, but we had no idea what was going to happen. Her rent's risen $180 a week. It was my 24th application. I'd made about three private applications. Um, I inquired and inspected about uh, 40 places. I don't care. I see broken floor, I don't care. I see mould, I don't care. It's got a roof, I'm applying. The Tasmanian government walked out of the summit promising change. More than 700 lots of public land across the state have been made available for housing. But no homes have been built so far. 22 families were housed after a review of Housing Tasmania's portfolio. And there's now clearer data from short-stay accommodation companies, but concerns about their impacts remain. Housing advocates say there's been some success, but much more is needed. What we need now is to see a big boost to our social housing. The government's promised to build 1,500 additional social housing properties by mid-2023. Shelter Tasmania wants that ramped up to 10,000 homes in a decade. At the moment we believe that the building sector in Tasmania is about at capacity. This government is 
has intensified its investment and has currently got $300 million uh, of investment in our budget. We're pulling every lever we can right across the market to provide uh, more supply and capacity to meet demand. Those living through it are calling for new solutions. Let's think creatively about having some capping on rentals, having subsidies for people on rentals, because building new houses, there's way more people and then, then building new houses is going to help right now. Well, I'd like the government to, you know, do it, either reintroduce these schemes or have a scheme there that's, you know, affordable. In the meantime, Tasmanians like Mr Kamel face a hard road ahead. Alexandra Humphreys, ABC News. An example there of rent increases of $180 a week. And in the past five years, rent increases have dramatically exceeded income growth. The private rental market's being blamed for forcing people into homelessness. Well, I might go look at it this afternoon. Despite months of searching, Paul Richardson's been unable to find an affordable home to rent. Way too dear. Can't afford that. That's 450 a week, mate. Oh. Yeah. Paul's on a carer's pension. His son Zachary has cerebral palsy and epilepsy. He's on disability payments. Their rent's rising by 18%, but every cent's already spoken for. The rent's just gone through the roof. If you get an increase of, you know, just 400 to 450, well, that's, that's off the bottom line, so we can't afford nothing. Can't afford to eat, basically. In Tasmania, housing stress is increasingly prevalent. Look, we have real concerns about the private rental market. Um, there's, an, there's an incredibly low supply at the moment and a very high demand. In the last three years, Tasmania's median rents have risen 22%. Data from the Tenants' Union shows the median price for a three-bedroom home in southern Tasmania is up 18% to $450 a week. It's up 21% in northern Tasmania to $363, and in the northwest it's risen 13% to $300 a week. We're gravely concerned. We, we feel like last year what we talked about a lot was that this potential cliff and what we're seeing right now is that people are poised on the edge of that cliff. Some are making desperate pleas in online classifieds, including mother of three, Christine Curry. It's very stressful, yes. The kids are not coping with it very well. Um, they're struggling to live their everyday life. In extreme cases, housing instability can lead to family breakdowns. It can in influence uh, problems for children and young people across the spectrum of well-being. So where you can access education, where you can access work, whether or not you're feeling safe. According to Shelter Tasmania, the median income for people renting in Hobart is $64,000, compared with more than $93,000 in Melbourne. There are calls for Tasmania's coronavirus protections against rent rises and evictions to be reintroduced for 12 months. But that's not something the government supports. It gives you a bad feeling in your guts when you've got nowhere to go. And if you get more people on the street, well, well no one's making money out of that. An increasingly likely prospect for this father and son. Alexandra Humphreys with that report. The other side of the real estate market is property sales and homes in Tasmania are currently fetching record prices, selling within days of going on the market. The stiff competition is forcing some bidders to take risks, but buyers beware. As Laura Beavis reports, Tasmania has fewer legal protections for home buyers than most other states. For months, Georgia Heinegger and Tom Butler have been inspecting houses, hoping to buy their first home. So far, five offers have resulted in disappointment and frustration. It's like, hopes up, heart's broken, within four days, less than four days. It's, yeah, real, real tough. <laughs> So the couple are trying to buy in a rapidly changing Tasmanian property market. 
Hobart's median house price grew by 2.5% last month and 8.7% over the past year. Prices in regional Tasmania grew even faster, rising by 2.7% in February and 13.8% over 12 months. In many suburbs, particularly in Hobart, we're seeing days on market of single figures. That's also being replicated in Launceston and on the northwest coast as well. I like it. Mm. Ms Heinegger says competition is so fierce she's felt pressure to waive conditions like building inspections and finance clauses that are meant to protect her if there's a problem. We've made a lot of those risks. We've put maybe three offers in on houses sight unseen. Um, we almost got a place but then we found out that the huge shed in the backyard wasn't council approved. Tasmania's property sale laws offer little legal protection to buyers. Most other Australian states and territories have mandatory cooling off periods for residential property sales. Many also have mandatory vendor disclosure laws. New South Wales and Victoria have the strongest. Tasmania has neither. Hobart agent Jasmine Rankin says interstate buyers are often surprised Tasmania doesn't have those laws. She says in the current market they feel pressure to waive even optional legal protections. They feel like they shouldn't and they feel like they can't. You know, if they're determined to get a property then they're simply not competitive if they're, you know, wanting to use cooling off periods or even subject to finance. Vendor disclosure laws force home sellers to give buyers information about potential problems affecting their property. Some property law experts say introducing the laws in Tasmania would make sales fairer and faster. The disclosure laws say, well, you can enter into a contract purchaser uh, because you've got these protections available to you if you do find something that uh, is seriously wrong, which, would, which the laws will cover. Vendor disclosures would be incredibly helpful and empowering for people just to have some confidence, you know, to, to be able to submit offers. But Tasmania's Real Estate Institute argues vendor disclosure would make sales slower and more expensive. By imposing mandatory vendor disclosure, it, it would, was going to impose between two and five thousand dollars to the sale of, of a property. The tough market conditions are not enough to deter hopeful house hunters like Georgia Heinegger. It's not a pleasant experience but obviously the outcome is great. <laughs> a risk sometimes worth the reward. Laura Beavis reporting there. There are also increasing concerns about the impact of the housing crisis on young people. Tasmania's youth unemployment rate is almost 15%, with many relying on income support payments to survive. With rents skyrocketing and homeless services at capacity, vulnerable teenagers are being forced to sleep rough. Reporter Anna Fromberg met some of them. It's a long walk to and from school for Braden Randall from East Devonport. He can't afford a bus ticket after being forced into homelessness last year. Back at home there were nine other people at, uh, in the house, um, myself being the tenth person, and it was a three bedroom place so already no room for anyone. Um, just struggling to feed an extra mouth so I just couldn't be there. After six months couch surfing and sleeping in shelters, the 19-year-old recently secured a modest unit. The rent chews up most of his youth allowance, but he's re-engaged with school and is repeating year 12. He says it's a huge relief to be out of the shelter environment. There was people using drugs, hard drugs, um, people that didn't respect other people's boundaries. Um, walking in on us in the shower or in bed, just not something you want to be dealing with. The state's housing crisis leaves many young Tasmanians with little choice. The youth allowance is, is quite low. Um, we're only talking about um, you know, quite a minimal increase into the youth allowance and it just will not meet the uh, rental costs currently. According to the Australian Institute of Health and Welfare, one in four Tasmanians accessing specialist homelessness services in 2020 were young people. On any given day, 499 young people sought support, but there are just 55 youth shelter beds in the state. You have so much anxiety while couch surfing like, or 
Like, will I get kicked out? Will I have a place to stay next week or whatever? 20-year-old Ruby has just moved into Everline House in Devonport, a 25-bed supported accommodation facility managed by Anglicare. There are two other similar facilities in the state, one in Launceston, one in Hobart and two more on the way, but there are strict selection criteria. We have many young Tasmanians that may not be eligible for those types of supported accommodation facilities. We have young Tasmanians that are experiencing complex needs as we speak and there are very limited services available to those individuals. Young Tasmanians account for about one third of the state's public housing waiting list and advocates say they're often the lowest priority despite their vulnerability. In Launceston, a community-led solution is in the pipeline. A lot of the people in, in our group didn't yeah. realise how, how bad it really is. The Tail Race Community Church is developing an app where Tasmanians can donate $5 a week to buy land and build units for homeless youth. It's not just a government uh, responsibility. We are a tribe and it does take a tribe to raise a child. And it's really not good enough when we've got 12-year-olds, um, 13-year-olds, 14-year-olds not having shelter. Young people like Braden Randall couldn't agree more. Anna Fromberg, ABC News. And ABC News will be keeping a close eye on Tasmania's housing crisis. To stay up to date with the latest, go to abc.net.au slash news. I'm Guy Stoner. See you next time.